ordination of Matthew Dreyer. Dyer. Sorry for ben, ben, why have I got that on my tongue? I cannot get it, get rid of it. Dyer, I know it, I know it. Come on, Dave. <laughs> uh, but so thankful for all of you coming today for it. Uh, he's a very special young man. You'll get to meet him even more so in a, in a, a while. But I want to introduce him, and I want to give some uh, scripture verses as an admonition for him and for all of us as well that we can take and we can apply uh, at this time. Let's turn on our, in our Bibles to Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. This is what it is. Is telling us. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. When it talks about all flesh, it's talking about all Adamic Israel. That's our Bible. It's who it is written to. The covenants and the promises are unto us, unto the Israel people. It goes on to say, And your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. By the way, I wonder if that's going to happen today. I wonder if that may lie ahead of us. Yes, there is a fulfillment in the Bible and what took place in Acts with this. But I think there might be an additional fulfillment in the Scriptures on this as well, and is also part of our deliverance because God Almighty is not going to do things the way we think He's going to do them. Amen? He hasn't done things, for instance, in this uh, virus today, has He? I don't think anybody expected this, the, the uh, things that have transpired this last year to have occurred. And how ridiculous people that can act with these masks and all this other junk that's going on and living in fear. Not the Word of God. Even so-called Christians. And we've seen that with the Baptists and the Methodists and the Mormons. Uh, all of them. They've acted in fear and done what the God science tells us to do today. And that's not what, what we should do. We should be obeying and staying on God's Word God is our sustainer. God's our deliverer. Verse 29, though. And also upon the servants and upon the maidens, in those days I will pour out my spirit. Well, if God's promised that in his word, he's going to do so. And he's done so at many different times in our uh, past in our historical past. He's poured out His spirits at different times. And I believe, again, ladies and gentlemen, you, you can quote me on this. God's going to pour out His Spirit as a way for us to de in days ahead. He's going to pour out His leading. And we're going to follow that leading, I can assure you. God's uh, remnant, that is. Make it very clear. All right, let's go on to 1 Samuel 16, verse 5. <clears throat> 1 Samuel 16, verse 5. I had to read this because this is about David. And he said peace, peaceably, this is Samuel, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. Well, it's a big event. I don't know what all took place here. I don't know anybody that fully understands this sanctification and this sacrifice. Yeah, it's holy. Yeah, it's to be set apart unto the Lord. 
And it's a, it's a dedication, isn't it? There's an operation. Uh, there's an office or a calling uh, for a dedication that's coming forth at this time. And don't tell me this is an important what we're learning here. Absolutely it's important. And we should be a part of this uh, sanctification process. Because we're going to uh, dedicate Matthew here uh, a little bit later. We're going to dedicate him to the Lord. All right, verse 6. Uh, uh, 16 and ver uh, verse 6. Uh, and it came to pass when they <clears throat> when they were come that he looked to Eliab. Now this is one of the eight children. And David was the eighth. We'll see that a little bit later here. And said, sure the Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on his height, or uh, on his height of stature, because I have what? Refused him. Hmm. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Well, that's what we're doing here today, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking on the heart of Matthew. And I can assure you there are some good things there. It's not perfect. We're not, none of us are perfect, are we? Amen. But we're doing the best that we can, and we're doing things according to what we believe God's Word directs us to do, and that's why he is becoming uh, or participating in this ordination service. He believes very strongly in this ordination service and the many things that God's going to be dealing with him in as in the days of hit. Amen. Then Jesse called Ebenadib and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shemaniah and passed by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse had seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. Wow. Well, then who has he chosen? And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all the children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, the eighth. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sit and brought him in. Now he was a, notice this, ruddy. He was white. He blushed and showed a red in the face, as Adam did. He was an Adamite. Amen, ladies and gentlemen? It goes on to say, and with all of a beautiful countenance. God didn't choose something ugly as an example. Now, it's kind of funny there, and I don't know everything and that took place there, but uh, we're reading about God's cho choosing. And I think jo God Almighty chose himself a pretty good, let's say, young lamb to be chosen for the ministry. Uh, he was innocent in many ways wasn't David. But we're finding out David, had, David eventually, as we read on, he had qualities. But he didn't get ahead of the Lord, did he? You know, he respected God's anointed. And he didn't try to take over the ministry until God had brought him in 
amen, through various hard times even, difficult times. I think a lot of you or us would have thrown up our hands probably and said, gosh, it's too hard. We can't handle this. Amen? And so we would have left and gone our own direction, our own way, possibly. Well, don't you do that. You know, don't give up on yourselves. Matthew, you don't give up on yourself. God has a calling for you, as you will see. Okay, and he was goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Samuel had done his job. He did the anointing. He passed on this anointing to David. He listened to the Lord. He wanted the Lord to make the choosing. We want the Lord to make the choosing as well. Do we not, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, we do. And the Lord's made a good choice, I believe. We've tried and tested this young man. So who is Matthew Dyer? Who is he? I wonder. Well, for one thing, Matthew has been in the ministry all of his life, we could say, Amen. He's been in the he's been in the kingdom Israel truth, and he has over the years proved himself worthy. I can get his dad's hand raised on that, Amen. Well, there are many of many many others that can testify for Matthew, the character of Matthew. Um, his work with the Lord in many, many ways. I'm sure, Matthew, you made your mistakes over the years. We've all made our mistakes. But God's moving, moving him in the right direction. Uh, he's staying upon God's word. Matthew uh, <clears throat> has been in this truth many, many years. For instance, in 1991, they came into it and under the uh, pastorship of Peter J. Peters, he learned so much over the years. Uh, I want to tell this story that y you told about. It was, um, they were going also to this ministry at one time, and he was, they were, his dad was given various tapes, and they were mostly of, uh, uh, P. Peters at that time. He has listened to other ministers, including Pastor Sheldon Emery and myself and others over the years that have made a tremendous difference in his life. But I, rem uh, I remember the story you talking about, and he was kicked out. The whole family was kicked out of the church because they were well, they weren't fully following this message at the time, but they were in some ways following this message to a large degree, and they were kicked out of the church. Can you believe that happening? Yeah, the first ones that gave you the uh, tape on that. <clears throat> Just to put it mildly, folks, if you don't know it by now, I mean, there's so much politics going on in a lot of these churches. And it's out of the flesh, a lot of it. Uh, and they're kind of a dictatorship. They want you to abide by their way. Well, if they're following God's word, we certainly do want that to happen. Uh, but we want the Bible. We want to be led by the word of God. So, there are many, many good things that have transpired in Matthew's life, and uh, we are very, very happy about that. 
You've taught the kingdom, understand the kingdom. You've been blessed by the kingdom. His wife is Cassie. She uh, is not able to be here. Uh, They have um, three children. Actually, three boys. Devin, Finley, and Peter. And uh, we're happy about that. I know that you're very happy about that. But he is producing in the kingdom. He's being fruitful and multiplying. And we want to pray for that to continue in your life as well. And you'll learn many new things. Your children will not be all the same. They'll they'll be different. They'll have strength and characters that, you know, so uh, they will build upon, but they, uh, you won't have any control over it. Right now you think, oh, I have total control. To some degree, you and your wife will, but you will not have total control over that. My wife and I have learned that over the years. <clears throat> so my topic and instruction to you, Matthew, and uh, we're going to begin in 2 Corinthians right now, over, uh, let's see, verse, chapter uh, 13 and verse 5. And what I'm going to be dealing with mainly throughout the rest of this message is on biblical examination. I thought that would be a good topic. We're not going to exhaust it all. But I want to certainly go over some of the main uh, thoughts on why and how it is important that we biblically examine ourselves. So, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Oh, oh, no, Corinthians. Did I say Chronicles? Thank you for correcting me. Quote, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves Know ye not your own selves, how that Christ, Jesus Christ, is in you, except ye be reprobates. Matthew, myself and others have examined you over the years, seen the fruit of your labor. It's good labor. Let me assure you that it's good labor. And we want you to continue in that. But we want to bring out some different aspects to you this morning on these things uh, as part of this service. So you will understand and others will understand how important it is that you're led by the Word, by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is in your life. So Matthew has made sacrifices for The faith. He's proven himself over and over. And the Kingdom Israel movement needs men like this. Amen? We need such men growing in this movement, uh, teaching the truth, coming to a knowledge of the truth, and helping others. I can imagine. Can you? I think it's glorious to think about the people that will be affected by your ministry and your life, learning about the glories of the kingdom. Also, don't forget that we ordained not too long ago uh, Kevin Reed. He's another good one um, that is continuing in the ministry. I got to meet his wife. My wife and I got to meet uh, Maggie the other day, and uh, she's a very wonderful lady And uh, she's so excited about this kingdom message and meeting uh, kingdom people and so thankful that the Lord uh, has, the Holy Spirit has come upon her and given her new insight and understanding. And basically, Matthew, he will do the same for you. I want you now to... uh, Move towards, in your Bibles, to Psalms 26, verse 2. I want you all to 
Uh, take notice of these verses. Psalms 26 and verse 2, quote, Examine me, O Lord, not man. Thank God it says that, right? Amen. We want the Yahweh to examine us. The Lord Jesus Christ, they're one and the same. To examine us, to prove us, to try us. In fact, that's the next, next uh, part of this verse. And prove me, try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I, I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither <clears throat> will I go in with dissimilars. Uh, that's talking about people who cover up the truth. And you'll experience people like that as you go along. You've really got to guard and protect the truth. I have hated the congregation of evildoers. Now, you know, first of all, people would think, oh, that's your flesh saying that. No, that's not our flesh. That's what the Word of God says. We're supposed to stand on the Word of God. To be uh, as alert as we can be in protecting this Word. That's why we don't... Or Open this congregation to any and everybody. You don't want sodomite sitting in the back of the room, do you? You don't want uh, these race mixers in the back of the room, black and white or whatever. The Black people, you stay with your own people. Let them deal with their own kind. Our kind is of Adam, and that's who we're going to stay with. We are Adamites or and or Israelites. Amen? But um, I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Oh, no, we'll just tear that out of our Bibles, Pastor. We don't like what it says there. We can sit with them. We'll try to convert the wicked. No, that isn't what the Word of God tells us to do at all. It tells us if people are acting contrary, you know, within strong limits to God's Word, not if they told a white lie or something like that, but if they are in gross violation of God's Word, don't sit with the wicked. Well, I want to convert them at it. No, that isn't what the Word of God wants you to do at all. You can preach to them. But until they, their heart uh, becomes converted and they're of your own kindred, you don't invite them in, into the congregation. So, Matthew, don't associate with those type of people. Ultimately, we need the Lord Jesus Christ to try us, to prove us, and He will. Jesus, by the way, he knows exactly how to test us and prove us. Amen, ladies and gentlemen? Boy, he knows our heart. But, and sometimes I, in the uh, past years, I'm not anymore, but I'm like, how did you know that, Jesus? <laughs> in a way. But boy, he sure knows how to push us. Uh, here are some other verses. Uh, believe me, as a minister of the gospel, we need a certain amount of repetition. Do we not? The Bible talks about that. And just look at the book of Proverbs as an example, if you doubt me over this. How many things, times things are repeated? So Psalms, if you will turn there, 139, verse 23, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. What is that way everlasting? Lord Jesus Christ and His kingdom. He is our king, and He has a kingdom, right? He has a purpose. He has a land. It's the new Jerusalem, ladies and gentlemen. There are various things about the kingdom. 
And uh, I hope you know that, everybody. Matthew, I know you certainly do. Know those keys of the kingdom. I want you now to move over to 1 John. Because the kingdom is supposed to be our goal and objective, ladies and gentlemen. And we are be, to be found faithful in that kingdom. And 1 John 3, verse 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word. Well, now a lot of people would stop there and say, Oh, isn't it the word? No. Yes, it is the word, but it's more than the word. He goes on to say, Neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. What do we need? We need to let the light of Lord Jesus Christ shine in our ways, in our actions, in our behavior, in our character. Amen? And that will make a big difference. And I think the reason, in some ways, Christianity has failed is because that character is lacking. Amen? And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. Amen? I'm so glad that's in the word of God. It's greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, uh, then have we confidence towards God. I want all of us to have confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ and His Spirit. I want us all to be built up in Him. And I'm still, as I've told Matthew, a work in progress in that area. We, you will always be a work in progress if you stay upon the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. I thought at one time in listening to a minister a long time ago, wow, I've exhausted the Word of God. Why, I'm a know-it-all in the Word of God. And then God started tearing me down and breaking me down on this particular issue and this issue and this issue. And I came to realize real quick, no, Pastor Varley, you do not know it all, as some ministers try to claim. But on my work in progress of the Holy Spirit, I know, Matthew, that you mostly have a clean heart. Again, I'm very humbled by that and thankful for that to occur. So let me assure you, my good man, you're not perfect, but you're in good shape. And you're ready to step in to the, uh, this job administering the gospel, the kingdom gospel is really what it's all about. When you understand who Jesus is, again, his purposes. And you're going to run into some antichrists along the way. Let me assure you of that. Uh, but how should I say it? You already know this, I know. But I need to say this for you, your sake again. So, so you will understand you're in a new world order. But it's the Antichrist, basically, it's new world order. It's being run by communists, being run by, again, these Antichrists of all shapes and sizes and forms. And I can't believe the deception, even though I've known about uh, the takeover of schools, I couldn't believe how they have taken over today. And your job and my job is to help put a stop to that. You say, well, it's small. I don't, you know, don't worry about the numbers. What you worry about 
is the biblical issues you are there to discuss. And God may, uh, he'll use the various numbers. Don't you worry about the people and the size. Uh, you, mer- you mainly worry about the things I'm talking to you about today, and you'll do fine. For instance, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 4, you all like these so far? Yeah, good. I, I think it's good as biblical instruction. Galatians 6, 4. But let every man prove his own work. Wow, we could stop right there, couldn't we? Good verse. And then he shall have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Pretty plain, isn't it? For every man shall bear his own burden. But let him that is taught in the word, the Bible, amen, communicate unto him that teacheth teacheth in all good things. In other words, uh, it's talking about basically, to put it in certain terms, good people. You're talking to good people. Okay? Verse um, 7, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. Amen. For he that soweth to his flesh, look out for that flesh, ladies and gentlemen, shall the flesh reap corruption. We don't want corruption to reap it to ourselves. And if you do things according to the what the Bible talks about, warns us against the things of the flesh, you will of yourself reap corruption. Trust me on this. And what the Word of God says. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. I love that. If you sow to the Spirit and the things of the Spirit are Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Amen? We, you reap those types of things. And when you're ministering the Word of God, even though it talks about wicked, evildoers, you're reaping the Holy Spirit. Okay. So Matthew recognized these words in a big, big way. There are more I could set on because of the time factor I'm not going to go into Uh, them in a bigger, deeper way, you understand them. So hold fast to these words. They're kingdom principles. Be faithful, obedient, and true. Uh, Matthew, these are kingdom principles. Matthew 13, verse 4. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls come and devour them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, and because they had no deepness of earth, And when the sun sun sprung up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, no foundation, they withered away. And some fell by the thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth the fruit, some in sixtyfold, some in hundredfold. Some, thirtyfold, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Pretty powerful. Are you all, or any of us, 100%? No. Some are 70-fold. Some are 50-fold. Some are 30-fold. Some are only 10-fold. 
uh, new, uh, new Christians. But God's with them. God's leading them, and God will lead Matthew and us as well. Thank God we have him to trust. We have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith remains in him. I want us to think about that, though. What if we didn't have the Lord Jesus Christ? What if we only had words? And it would be a dead foundation. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. We can depend upon him. Matthew, you could call upon him. I've called upon him lots of times. And he's answered. Maybe the answer was no. When I was so sure that it was supposed to be yes, and it, you were going to be there, lead me in this area. The Lord says no, just like in the choosing of David. Don't look at the outward count uh, things. Go by my spirit. And as the spirit leads you, it'll lead you in all truth, knowledge, and understanding. John, uh, lastly, let's go to John 12, verse 46. John 12, verse 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Folks, very important words. Meaning what? Let's elaborate on that a little bit here. Another word for it is don't dwell in Babylon. It's money, it's power, it's various forms and manipulation. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. Oh, hallelujah, some people would say for those words. We'll highlight them. We'll cherish these words. He will judge not. Let's go on, though. Let's not take this out of context. Some people take, again, God's word out of context, and they get the meaning really messed up. Let's not mix up the word of God. Read it in context. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And here's where Jesus clarifies this. Next verse. But he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. Oh, now he's judging. He's talking about judgment here. Jesus says, the eternal word of God, the word that I have spoken, the, sh the same shall judge him in the last day. What? It shall judge us. If an Israelite, for instance, rejects the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus shall judge him. How? By the word. God's word tells us what? I'm going to make it real short here. Yay or nay? Yes or no? It's really that simple. Or are you going to obey his word or not? Do you want blessings, America, or do you want curses? Donald Trump, I don't care if he's elected or not, is not going to be our judge. Amen? Amen? Look at verse 49. <clears throat> For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me and gave me a commandment of what I should say and what I should speak. Jesus was the man... He walked in the Spirit. He was of the Spirit. I don't need to go into all of that with you. Now, in God, uh, Matthew, God will do the same for you. He will, through His Word and Spirit, provide us again what to say and what to do. Verse 50. And I know that His commandment is life everlasting. Whosoever I speak, Therefore, 
even as I the Father saith unto me, so I speak. Hallelujah. And so, Matthew, we're asking you to do the same thing this morning. We're asking you to speak by the leaning of the Holy Spirit. We're asking you to do the kingdom and what the kingdom says. It's not just those things about the kingdom and, uh, and where Jesus talks about them. He elaborated on them, but they're really throughout the Word of God. It's all about His kingdom and His glory. Matthew, we are honored to have you with us today to lay hands upon you and to bring um, this special calling to you in your heart. And we hope God, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray you will bless us and bless this event by your Holy Spirit. Now, Ben, I'm going to ask you if you would come forth at this time with me. George apparently was called away by work or something else. Uh, he has to had to work for the paper. But we're going to call you forth to uh, lay hands on you at this time. Ben, I will ask you uh, to pray at first, and then I will close it in prayer. Matthew, would you go ahead and have a seat, sir? And we will start right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to dedicate Matthew as you have allowed us to dedicate Matthew. Via your commission and through your Holy Spirit, allow him to be a leader in our congregation. Yes. And through your Holy Spirit to give him strength, Father, that he will speak the words that you give him to speak. And we trust that this will happen and it will bless us, Father. And we appreciate this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We're, our hearts are full today because we're at this ordination time. We need men like Matthew to go into the kingdom of worth, this blessed kingdom of worth. And we believe that your Holy Spirit is upon him and leading him and guiding him and proving him. And you will continue to do this in his life. Make him the man of God you want him to be. Move upon him in a spiritual way. May he learn the, the power of prayer in his life. And what we are all about, he knows. But he will continue in this heritage, this spiritual place, the New Jerusalem, America that he will pronounce the kingdom unto America, to God's chosen people, Israel. Israel, come forth, we pray, through his leading and teaching. May it be upon Matthew at this time. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you now Pastor Matthew Dreyer. Dyer. Dyer. <laughs> Why did I do that again? Oh, uh, we will all take a break right now, and when we're through with that break, uh, he will come forth with a message.